Hello, world. so I want to talk about the first data science project I've committed to the GitHub repo, as you can see here. Uh, so this is my work on the environmentally responsible happy nation index, incidentally also pronounced as Arini, which is building on what I did for my bachelor's thesis research, first published six years ago. But anyway, this is a bit of a side research project I've been working on and where I've been trying to put my Python skills to some use. So I'll probably share a bit about uh, the technicalities of this, what I was trying to do. Um, and you know, if you're interested in the framework uh, behind this particular national success indicator, um, you know, that, that could be a separate deep dive video. But I think for now, um, I'll actually just quickly run through the notebook. Um, and essentially, just to put some sort of context to this, what, what I'm trying to do here is actually, I mean, my argument is that just as the GDP was created at a time uh, around the Great Depression, right? Um, there were long bread lines probably, and then the economy was doing really poorly, but no one actually really knew what was going on. So then uh, people realized we need a measurement of the national economy. And that's how the gross domestic product came about as a measure uh, by this economist, Kasnex, who is actually the probably the earliest critic uh, warning against um, the potential overreach of this particular measure already. But anyway, fast forward many decades uh, later, right? Now it's really something that every economy um, scrutinizes very closely, right? Because in one glance, your GDP, uh, how much total economic economic output there is and also how much economic output there is per capita uh, tells us a lot about the material standard of living in a country. But over time, we've also realized indeed there are many shortcomings to this measure, like right, pollution as to the GDP, it doesn't measure some of the most valuable things in life. Um, it tells us nothing about volunteerism, about household work, and in, in a way because of this uh, overreach in that sense, uh, things that cannot be measured in monetary terms gets undervalued. Right. Um, so, and I mean, within even within the economics literature, ever since the Easterlin paradox discovered that um, beyond a certain point, any further in improvements in GDP does very marginal, ma marginally increases our happiness, uh, somewhat very minimally. Or, I mean, I guess a better way to say that is really beyond a certain uh, economic income level, right? Um, an extra dollar doesn't do all that much for happiness. So anyway, um, so my argument is that as we, as the world grapples with the climate crisis, and as we realize that uh, there's been a lot of people have that have been left behind, right? Even despite all of capitalism's progress and whatnot, and of course, capitalism has many different forms and permutations. But essentially, um, there are all these other, almost like non-GDP problems that we need to solve, that we have no means of knowing how we're doing on those fronts because there is no complementary indicator. There is no measurement to tell us how we're doing. There is no scorecard, right? So that's kind of like the, the, the rationale for creating this index called uh, ERH and I, the Environmentally Responsible Happy Nation Index. Anyway, this is a very long intro. Um, you could kind of like read the original paper as well as my 2016 paper to get a better idea. And then what I'm trying to do now is really update these figures, right, for the years 2016 to 2019, which are pretty much I think the years that we have um, most of the data that we need. And essentially, uh, we're really just using a lot of open data, a lot of data that's essentially out there. You know, whether it's happy, uh, a measurement of happiness um, or a measurement of uh, life expectancy, pollution levels, and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, really, you know, read all the different relevant files that I need and then try to process the data frame in a way that allows me to perform the calculations, the tabulations that I need in order to arrive at the ERHNI score. And then hopefully, once we have those scores, I can actually then regress it against some of these things that maybe you see here, right? Things like freedom, trust, or maybe even 
what I'm ultimately interested in is uh, will we be able will, will we be able to tell or say that for every dollar increase in carbon tax, for instance, that's going to do this magnitude of change to a country's performance or the ERH at night. And will such an effect will such an effect be significant? Right? That's actually what I'm ultimately interested in. But first we need to compute this. So what you are seeing here is essentially first we read the happiness data for the year 2016. I mean, I can't want to do it for all these years, but I think we start with one year first, like how we will solve it for one year, then we worry about all the other years. Because anyway, for all the other years, it's really just a matter of um, more or less repeating the process, right? But anyway, so, so we read the happiness data and then we essentially, the first part to ERH and I calculation is the uh, net happy life years which is really taking happiness uh, over neutrality, therefore minus 5 um, because the happiness measures are usually in the range of like, I think 1 to 10 or 0 to 10. So we take it over neutrality and then we multiply by the life expectancy. Um, I believe we also do a multiply by 0 0.1 just to kind of like transform the data. But anyway, essentially the whole idea is to see how many years of life on average someone is um, happy in in a in a in a country, right? Uh, because it's not just happiness that we want. It's also not just long lives that we want. We want long happy lives. That's the idea behind looking at net happy life years uh, above above anything else. So that's why we need to combine that with life expectancy data which is something that we got from uh, World Bank. So here we are reading this data and essentially um, because of the way that the data, the CSV file is formatted, you need to skip over the first four rows. Um, and essentially now you see the, the, the first, I think the first major technical hurdle is in the happiness data I have the names of countries and then in the life expectancy data I have also names of countries as well as the country code. But you know, um, countries may be named a bit differently in one place versus another spreadsheet, right? Maybe in one spreadsheet it's called Congo something, and then in another spreadsheet it's called Republic of Congo something. Um, because there are also kind of like some variations to the way that some countries are named. Um, and, and so we can't always like expect an exact match on the country tax string, right? So I thought I want to use country code as an identifier to match these two. Then of course the problem is for the happiness data set, I do not have country codes. So essentially the solution to this is, I mean my interim solution is to use a package called Pi Country which will actually just fetch the alpha three country codes for all the countries in my happiness data set. Right, it's essentially going to add these things when it finds a match. Um, I think that's kind of like one way to solve it. I mean, it's essentially what we're trying to do here is kind of like the Python equivalent of a VLOOKUP, uh, some sort of a fuzzy match, essentially. Right, so anyway, I realized there is a package that can do this um, so this is what these two cells are about. But of course, uh, there are some countries that still didn't get matched when I you know, look at the data subsequently. Those countries would actually have not found in a country code. And this is the list of countries that weren't uh, successfully matched by the package. Although they are in my happiness data set. Um, so this is the part where, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it's a bit, machine assisted dumbness but essentially i i mean try to identify which are the countries that weren't matched right and then see whether they are and then essentially use that to build my dictionary of the corresponding um alpha three country codes for those uh countries so since there's some you know room for error here but it's not so bad because it's just like you know 20 countries um, but anyway, um, so so that's what this whole chunk is about, like you know, establishing that dictionary so that I can actually update, right, my happiness twenty sixteen uh, data frame, wherein if the country code is not found and is in my list here, right, I'll just update it accordingly. 
with this uh, data frame dot at kind of uh, method. So that's what we did, and we can actually now uh, merge our happiness and our life expectancy data sets on country code. And I use the left join to kind of like preserve some of these missing countries. But actually, in a way, it's not, not so important. I think in the end, we only weren't able to uh, match essentially only Taiwan, Palestinian territories, and Ivory Coast cannot be found in my. Um, in, 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 in the life expectancy data set. But anyway, so so you kind of like you you, you do a merge and then we can actually start to uh, I mean the beauty of pandas, right? Is now we can actually start to I mean essentially I just create a new column that is going to do this law that is going to be calculator based on my values in my other columns. You can just do it with one line of code. And I guess what I like about this is really that I don't have to worry about, you know, messing the data up. If this was done in Excel, um, sometimes you kind of accidentally, you know, press the wrong key or whatever, you have no idea what you did. But here, uh, I could just run this command and then there will be, you know, the only error possible with some sort of a logical error um, by virtue of my coding. Um, and of course, the other thing about pandas over Excel is really how fast and the, the massive size of the data that you can process with this vis-a-vis -vis Excel, which will just hang up. Um, anyway, so this is what we have in the end. We, uh, as you can see, there are kind of 157 rec 157 records, right? Because I kept the ones that couldn't be matched as well. Um, and if we now that we have this data calculator, we can also do a bar chart for the top 10 countries, right? So if you sort them, um, I guess it's not so much of a surprise, you know, a lot of the Western European countries are kind of like doing really well. You could sort them, uh, yeah, essentially do a plot like this. So this gives us our net happy life years. Lah. This next part is. Uh, what I'm still working through and what's super messy at the moment and um, but yeah it's kind of like uh, trying to break down how the per capita external cost could be calculated and expressed in terms of net happy life years right because the whole idea behind this measure is you want to take um, net happy life years long happy lives minus the external cost that is imposed by the country on the rest of the world right also expressed as a unit of net happy life years so there are kind of like some assumptions some approximations made for the purpose of advancing the argument and until you have better data you know at least you know what the assumptions are but uh, so so this is what was done in the twenty in, in the two thousand eight paper, um, and then essentially in twenty sixteen, I proposed certain improvements to how we can calculate this, and now for the for the data for the year for twenty sixteen and onward, I I think there are also um again for the. Other sources of, sources of data that can make this uh, measure more accurate and more up-to-date. Um, I think the key, I mean, again, this whole section is still being worked on. But I think the key um, difference at this point is really that uh, so far we have been using either China or kind of like the world as a reference nation upon which to calculate and say that, okay, maybe Singapore's share of external cost to towards contributing to climate change is Singapore's emissions divided by the world um, and then multiplied by whatever transformations that we have for turning that into the damage that is done in terms of uh, happy life years loss right so far um, I mean that's kind of like be the general approach but with the Previous tabulation, I think the issue is so, as I was looking at the data, I realized that the measure that we use for measuring like 
some sort of a disability adjusted life years lost, the burden of disease due to climate change um, used in the 2016 paper was last updated in 2004 and it's not very frequently updated. Um, so it seems highly inaccurate and highly outdated. Not to mention that at the end of the day, the sort of um, external costs that can the sort of like environmental damage or happy life years loss kind of like damage that different countries experience, right? Uh, it's quite different and it probably doesn't scale like that well or linearly to, to the amount of external costs or the amount of uh, emissions that they um, impose on the world, right? So I think for those two reasons, um, the lack of uh, updated data and secondly, that uh, it's just not so accurate and uh, so linear a relationship in the sense that um, actually potentially looking at using another measure which is called the Air Quality Life Index, uh, which it's really saying what what is the um, what is the uh, expected life what 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 is the potential gains in life expectancy if PM two point oh concentrations were reduced to meet WHO guidelines or in other words the number of happy life years that were lost right um due to pm 2.0 concentrations not being in line with uh, who guidelines so that's kind of like the something that i'm playing around with at the moment and i think if we are to use this i we may have to do something about the life expectancy they'll see here because this idea is really captured in this index right um and also and we probably need a way to see how that translates into happiness, into happy life years lost. Whether there's a need to adjust any of these other alpha, beta, gamma, gamma, whatever as well. Um, but yeah, this is where I am right now. And hopefully I'll be able to finish the 2016 um, calculations this week. And then... Uh, next week, we'll, we'll really just be doing it for the other years. Um, then having some other people check my data, uh, hopefully. And then running some regressions already. Because uh, as I mentioned, I think ultimately what I'm interested in finding out is can I kind of like say that for every dollar in... for every dollar increment in the price of carbon, right? This is the size, this is the magnitude of the impact that it's going to have on a country's uh, earnings score. So that's it for the time being.